Now, the thought is Psalm 23. Let's look at this. And I believe we'll cover every human space. I want to explain what Psalm 23 and break it down. Today, Psalm 23 there. Verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. It says, I shall not do what? Want. So if you plant that seed, just verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. It means everything you want is done. Do you what I'm saying here? So it covers all of your wants. In the Hebrew, it says this word goes beyond needs to your wants. So it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So if the need of the one there is lack of money, it says, since the Lord is my shepherd, it covers that. Want of children, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, want of anything, the Lord is my shepherd. So I want to look at what it means the Lord is my shepherd, for that's where the revelation lies. In the Old Testament, all right, God had what they call 12 covenant names. In, in whole, he had 16 names it was called by in the Old Testament. 12 of them were covenant names, which means when you say Jehovah something, Jehovah something. So he was called, for example, Jehovah Rapha at a point, the Lord a healer. He was called, um, don't let me go into the complex ones, um, um, Jehovah and this, Jireh. Now let's go to Nisi and all of that. If you want to say the complex ones, eh? those days we used to preach those things. Jehovah Mekadesh. <laughs> ah, we have preached things, so Jehovah, Jehovah Rofeka. Uh, then we'll go into the Hebrew. All right. So, <laughs> okay, Jehovah Jireh, we all know that one now. It's easy. All right, so what happened was that these were the names through which. So if you went to pray and you had need of healing, you would say, Jehovah Rapha, I'm calling on you. And it meant something. There was a covenant behind it. All right? If, if there are certain things, you go and say, Jehovah, all right, um, Lord my shepherd was Jehovah Rohi. You call him by that name and it meant certain things. Now what happened in the name of Jesus Christ now is that all the names of God were put together, embedded in the name of Jesus, and then he went beyond everything that was going on in the Old Covenant. So Jesus is our shepherd, all right? Jesus is our healer, all right? Jesus is our righteousness. Uh, Jesus is our provider. Everything is there, all right? All right? According to his riches and glory by Christ. Jesus is the one with the wealth that will meet the needs of every single person. So we look at him as God, our shepherd. Now, what does that mean? Because once you understand this, then it says, through that understanding, ones have disappeared. So when you confess that with that understanding there, because it's the understanding behind the scripture that determines the measure of power that comes out when a confession is made. All right, with the understanding that you have there, you can make these declarations and have that. So what does it mean, the Lord is my shepherd? We start with that. Once you understand that it says, I shall not want, that he maketh me, and we understand as a shepherd, first thing that he will do is to make you lie down in green pastures. And then the second thing he will do as a shepherd is to lead you beside still waters. Then when those two are established, he will restore your soul. All right, we'll look at that. But the first thing he does is to make me lie down in green pasture. Now, what does that mean? Go to Genesis quickly, chapter 46 and verse 32. Genesis 46 and verse 32. Genesis 46 and verse 32. Genesis 46 and verse 32. Right, the Lord is my shepherd. Verse 32. It says here, right, want to look at what it means to be a shepherd. It says here, and the men are shepherds. For their trade hath been to feed what? Cattle. The reason why you're called a shepherd is because your trade is to feed. So when you say the Lord is my shepherd, they trade. When you say trade, a carpenter has a trade, which means there's a service he provides, there's a product he gives, and in exchange for that, you give him money or whichever way he deems it fit, all right, as a, uh, as a justifiable way of rewarding him for his labor. So it tells us that the service that Jesus provides as our shepherd is that he will feed us. What he does in order to destroy the lack out of our lives, we're going to see this, in order to destroy fear so that we can walk through the valley of the shadow of death 
fearing no evil. What he does as he establishes himself as our shepherd, what he does is to feed us. That is the business of God, of Jesus, as our shepherd. Which means that he's not feeding us with natural food. For the Bible says man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So it's through receiving spiritual nourishment. This is very important. Through receiving spiritual nourishment. Let me tell you. The weakness in the church is a lack of understanding of this 101 principle in, in Christianity. That the way he does anything is by feeding that person, giving spiritual nourishment into the heart of that person to produce an experience on the outside. For example, this issue I was talking about praying for the sick person, the way he healed the body, a person can be praying and just praying and praying, God heal me. But the way he heals the body is that the person prays to God, all right, feed me with the word and the scriptures that will produce this thing on the inside of me. Let's look at the Syrophoenician widow. She came to Jesus Christ and talked about her daughter getting healed. And Jesus looked and said, it is not meat for me to give the bread of the kingdom, or children of the kingdom, to dogs. Which means that if somebody wants to get healed, Jesus will feed that person with a type of bread. And if that person eats that bread, there will be healing in the body of that person. Listen to this. The Syrophoenician widow went and said, all right, even the crumbs from the table, that if the dogs feed on it, Jesus said, for this I say, which means the crumbs have come to you. From eating the crumbs, that woman by feeding on the crumbs got her daughter healed. Which means a person, a parent can feed on something and it affects all the children. Do you get what we're saying here? We must understand the power of spiritual understanding. This is not theoretical now. You're going to see this. The way he destroys it, which means that what we're saying is that the person who is believing God for healing, the reason why it doesn't work, is that they are using, what they are really using is willpower to believe that they are healed. That if I can believe I'm healed, this is what's going on, and pray, and believe I'm healed, and believe I'm healed, and believe one day I'm going to get healed. If I can believe I have the money, and believe I have the money. If you ask them, where are the scriptures that you feed on every day? Where are the scriptures that you feed on every day there? If somebody comes and shows them the scripture and says, pray to God, open the eyes of my understanding that I might feed on these things. And they start feeding on the atoning work of Jesus. And they start feeding, feeding on that. And they understand that and start going into it. The more they feed on it, the more they know and they know and they know. And those words are sharper than any two-edged sword. Will enter in divine nation of soul and spirit, joint and marrow. And it will get in. So they understand that it's by feeding on that. So if a person wants to produce an experience on the outside, they know that they say Jesus, you know, will feed them. That's why Jesus called Peter. He said, Peter, if you love me, you know what you will do? Feed my sheep. Which means this is what Jesus does. He said, Peter, come. If you love me, he said this, feed my sheep there. I said this first, second service. I have no problem with anybody living in this church. I ain't got a problem with it. But I have a problem. If someone tells me I left this church because they weren't getting fed, then I know there's a problem. But if they say I left this church, you see, Pastor God, you preach this very well. If you sit down and hear him teach, you get blessed. However, I don't like the way he looks. I'm good. I'm cool with God. Because the trade of the shepherd is to feed. Do you get what I'm saying here? The trade of the shepherd, which means that is what he does. What he gives out is to feed. All right, the sheep. And I've never understood this. I'm, I'm not meaning to offend, but I've never understood this. I've never in my life gone to any church except what they are saying there. Every day is entering me well. I will go to church. Why do you go to church? Because it's there my house. Me, I will go to church because it's there my house. I said, why do you go to church? Because when I got there for the first time, the welcome pack. Me? Look, when they were preaching to us, there was no welcome pack. Listen, when we joined Christianity, there was, it's now that they're doing customer service. There was no welcome pack. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here? We will go on fast. All right? When I joined this Christianity, we were in a, in a primary school. There was a hole. There was no AC. We couldn't even imagine AC. What is an international school? You know the place? Huh? Small, small chairs, all of us. 
old, young, children's chairs, listening to the word of God. And the table was the pulpit. And was all just to stand there and be shared. Listen, there was a hole in the assembly. So we all would do that. When it's raining, you won't see the pastor. Because rain will fall in, in the hole down there. We are sitting around like this. So you, you'll be looking this way. And you'll be looking, and you'll be looking at the pastor. All right? The rain got so heavy one day we couldn't hear the pastor. He was teaching. Nobody could hear him. And we're all around him. So we had to stop. Practice rough faith. He said, let's begin to praise God that the rain will stop. We started worshipping God. The rain ceased. We continued with some real faith. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Not that it's raining. I'm not coming to church. I say, real faith. <laughs> you don't know what I'm saying here. Real faith here. The Lord is my shepherd. We're going to say this. I shall not do what wants there. All right? I shall not want. Okay? Hi there. My name is Paul I'm the Senior Pastor Covenant Christian Center. Let me first of all say Happy New Year. And may the mercy of God rest upon all your activities. And may the Spirit of God guide all of your steps into the place of your rest. This year, 2015, in Jesus' name. Now, this is to inform you of our upcoming conference, Wafbeck 2015. This meeting is designed by God, first of all, to establish people on the principles of God's word that will make them live a supernatural life. Second reason is to cause people to have an impartation of the spiritual substance and grace into their lives in order for what God has designed for 2015 to come to pass within your life. And we have a host of great and powerful speakers on the national scene and international scene. Speakers like Pastor Matthew Ashimanawa. A man who starts with a foot of success and you have taught him can only succeed the more. Bishop Francis Walioke. Faith honors God. Therefore, God honors faith. When people exercise faith in God and they believe his word and they act on it because simply that's what faith is. Faith is to act on the word of God. Dr. Bill Winston. You didn't rest enough and now all of a sudden part of your body is failing. I've got good news for you. He said to Abraham, glory to God, <laughs> you are the possessor of heaven and earth. Now, let me tell you, all your body parts are already in heaven. Anything that goes wrong with you has a replacement in heaven. Reverend Mac Hankins. The first thing Jesus said about faith is faith must speak. The first thing Jesus said about faith is the saying or the speaking part. In other words, there's no such thing as silent faith. Faith must have a voice. So when Jesus refers to the saying part first, and then the last thing he says about faith, he refers to the saying part. Reverend Scott Webb. And because we are new creatures, I, I tell you what, I'm just going to come on down here where I can, I can get, get at you. Because we are new creatures, God wants us to learn to live a new way of life. The problem we have in the body of Christ to a great extent is many Christians are satisfied with just being improved old creatures. Pastor Taiwo Udukoya. This God, by his character, starts from the end. So I wrote by the edge of, edge of my Bible. I said, if it involves God, the end is predetermined. If God is involved... It and a host of other ministers. This meeting will start on Friday, the 23rd of January, and will last through to the 30th of January. The venue will be the Covenant Place right next to National Theatre Igoma Lagos. We'll have it in three sessions, morning sessions and afternoon sessions will be teaching sessions to ground people on the principles of God's word. And then the evening sessions will be Holy Ghost meetings and miracle meetings where there will be an impartation of God's grace. Looking forward to seeing you at any of the meetings. God bless you and have a wonderful year in his presence. I mean, I hear people say, you know, someone told me once, when I went to City Mall, he said, you know, people like us don't go to those areas of Lagos. I said, what did you say? 
All right. Now, let's look at another scripture. Go to Isaiah 40, quickly on verse 11. And that's why we are fasting. I hope. <laughs> All right? We are fasting because you don't fast that God, hunger strike. Can you see I'm not eating? Okay? Now, this year, you can see. You can see when I woke up this morning. You, I saw the yogurt. God. God, you know how I love yogurt. I released it for you. God, release that blessing back to me. Listen. You fast for a higher level of spiritual nourishment. That's what you fast for. He said, how do I know that there's higher level? He said, I will, I will have fed you with the finest of wheat, which means there are levels. He said, you will feed in the high places. So you can feed in the low places. Do you understand this? When they were about to enter the promised land, God changed their diet. Because when he changed their diet, he said, you have a greater task. When there's a greater task, it changes your diet so that you are stronger. Christianity is about this thing. That's why it says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. David said, I have esteemed thy words more than my necessary food. Which means the reason why I stayed off my necessary food was to get your word. And so we're saying that these first three weeks, load yourself with things. Because when you, God starts giving you spiritual knowledge, he begins to show you things to come. It's part of spiritual nourishment that entered Joseph that he knew the economic cycles for 14 years. He takes, shows you things, takes the things of Jesus, reveals them. You break, listen, by the, by the sixth day of this fast, you should start breaking into the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. Which means gifts of the Spirit should assist you in getting thoughts and revelation from God. So Isaiah 40 here. Verse 11. Oh, let's read from verse 9. O Zion that bringeth good things, get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem that bringeth good things. Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold thy God. Which means come out and lift your voice up and tell people, Behold, God is coming. Right? Then look at what it says. Behold, the Lord will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work is before him. Now, what will he do when he comes? He shall do what? Feed his flock like a shepherd. So what a shepherd does, which means when he shows up in your life, the first thing he does is to feed you. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. Quickly, let's move on. Jeremiah 23. All right. After Isaiah, we get to Jeremiah 23 and verse 4. So he will feed. And verse 4. That's what nourishment is about. He says, I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. I know it's not with rice, you know. You know. Okay. Shall feed them and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed, confused, discouraged. Neither shall they be lacking, say the Lord. Which means to destroy fear, lack, confusion, is by feeding. So he comes and feeds them. That's why this is so important. That you understand the most important thing is that Jesus Christ is my shepherd. And this is one of the mistakes we make in Christianity, modern day Christianity, pressure that is on pastors, you want to grow your church. And so, you know, everything must look nice. So what we just do is uh, people come into it. We say, all right, join something, join a department, we try to engrave people so people have a sense of belonging and all of that. But, you know, you can lay a terrible foundation for people in the future. Like Mary and Martha, right? I've said it in this church. If you are in more than one department, nobody sent you. You understand what I'm saying? You are not the second Messiah. Please, 
Look, have one department, and Jesus said, only one thing is needful. And she has chosen the good part. That you are running around. You know what will happen? A lot of people are running around in churches, but their souls are lean. Spiritually speaking, they are weak. They don't know how to handle real issues in life. What they know us in the church. We are doing things. Okay? That's why it says, as newborn babes, what do you do? Desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow. It's to feed on the word to grow. Now, what now happened is that Lazarus now fell sick. And if Lazarus falls sick, the only way you can get Lazarus healed is by knowing what Jesus is saying. It's not by serving Jesus or running around serving cups and tables. So what happens is that, and we don't want this, Satan plays a master stroke, gets people to move up the ladder in, in the church, become visible, they knock their lives. And to a sinner, you come to church every day, he hears you praying in tongues, morning church, tomorrow church, tomorrow church. Then the landlord says he has not been able to pay his rent. You say, where is your God? That's how he defines it. Now, how can in very pragmatic terms? It's we that get into the church and we get into the church and don't see God again. In very pragmatic terms there. So the important thing is that there's nourishment. Hi there, my name is Paul Jerry. I'm a senior pastor of Covenant Christian Center. Let me first of all say Happy New Year. And may the mercy of God rest upon all your activities. And may the Spirit of God guide all of your steps into the place of your rest this year 2015 in jesus name now this is to inform you of our upcoming conference wafbeck 2015 this meeting is designed by god first of all to establish people on the principles of god's word that will make them live a supernatural life second reason is to cause people to have an impartation of the spiritual substance and grace into their lives in order for what God has designed for 2015 to come to pass within your life. And we have a host of great and powerful speakers on the national scene and international scene. Speakers like Pastor Matthew Ashimalawa. A man who starts with a foot of success and you have taught him can only succeed the more. Bishop Francis Waleoke. Faith honors God. Therefore, God honors faith. When people exercise faith in God, and they believe his word and they act on it, because simply that's what faith is. Faith is to act on the word of God. Dr. Bill Winston. You didn't rest enough, and now all of a sudden part of your body is failing. I've got good news for you. He said to Abraham, Glory to God. <laughs> you are the possessor of heaven and earth. Now, let me tell you, all your body parts are already in heaven. Anything that goes wrong with you has a replacement in heaven. Reverend Mac Hankins. The first thing Jesus said about faith is faith must speak. The first thing Jesus said about faith is the saying or the speaking part. In other words, there's no such thing as silent faith. Faith must have a voice. So when Jesus refers to the saying part first, and then the last thing he says about faith, he refers to the saying part. Reverend Scott Webb. And because we are new creatures, I, I tell you what, I'm just going to come on down here where I can, I can get, get at you. Because we are new creatures, God wants us to learn to live a new way of life. The problem we have in the body of Christ to a great extent is many Christians are satisfied with just being improved old creatures. Pastor Taiwo Udukoya. This God, by his character, starts from the end. So I wrote by the edge of, edge of my Bible, I said, if it involves God, the end is predetermined. If God is involved... In and a host of other ministers. This meeting will start on Friday, the 23rd of January, and will last through 
to the 30th of January. The venue will be the Covenant Place right next to National Theatre Igomo Lagos. We'll have it in three sessions, morning sessions and afternoon sessions. We'll be teaching sessions to ground people on the principles of God's word. And then the evening sessions will be Holy Ghost meetings and miracle meetings where there'll be an impartation of God's grace. Looking forward to seeing you at any of the meetings. God bless you and have a wonderful year in his presence. Covenant Christian Center every Sunday has a pickup from the following places. Sabo. Higher Thermocool by Sabo Bus Stop. Onike Wire. Onike Roundabout by Tabadi Pharmaceutical. Fola Agoro. Orando Filling Station. Ojuelegba. UBA Ojuelegba. Sule. Masha Underbridge. Yaba. Covenant Christian Center. Yaba. The buses will arrive at 7.30 a.m. and leave at 7.55 a.m. They will also drop off at the same locations after the service at 9.45 a.m. God bless you as you come. Join Pastor Poju Oyemade every Sunday. First service at the Yaba Center, number 400 Harbert Macaulay Road, Yaba at 6.30 a.m. Second and fourth services at the Covenant Place, Igomu, Lagos, beside National Theatre at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Third service at the Island Center, Lagoon Restaurant, Ozumba Mbadiwe, Victoria Island, Lagos, at 8.45 a.m. And also at the midweek service at the Yaba Center, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you for watching.